Imagine a time of witch prosecution. Imagine a time of bad hygiene. Imagine a time of mean and artful people. Imagine a time of dukes, kings, princes, castles, mysteries and murder. You, listener, yes, I mean you, come with me. I will take you back to the late 15th century. Let us travel to the capital of England, the most glorious city of all times, London. But more specifically, let me take you, my listener, to the Tower of London, a castle on the north bank of the River Thames in central London. The home of the Crown Jewels of the United Kingdom has a long history and has served variously as an armory, a treasury and a menagerie, the home of the Royal Mint, meaning coins, and so on and so on. But in the late 15th century the castle was the prison of the so-called princess in the tower. I am so sorry, where are my manners? Firstly, let me introduce you to our detective. My name is Cameron Baldrick, part-time detective. I would like to solve the mystery about the disappearance and possible murder of those princes. Well, what happened? Who are they and why are they important, you might ask? You have found yourself in a historic and ancient place now. Try to follow and solve the mystery and try to answer one question at the end of our journey. What happened to the famous princes in the tower? Edward V of England and Richard of Shrewsbury were two little brothers. When their father, Edward IV of England, died, they were lodged in the Tower of London by a man who was supposed to look after them, their uncle, Richard, Duke of Gloucester. I think we might have our first suspect here. Why? Because after the boys, 12 and 9 years old, disappeared, this man took the throne for himself. Hmm. I know it's unclear what happened to the boys after their disappearance in the tower, but don't you think this is quite curious? His coronation took place and then his nephew just vanished? After Edward and his younger brother Richard were taken into the inner parts of the tower, they were seen less and less until they disappeared altogether. If the boys were indeed murdered, there are several major suspects for the crime. The evidence is ambitious and has led people to various conflicting conclusions. We start our interrogation with Richard, Duke of Gloucester. He is our prime suspect that is the most likely person to have committed or, let's say, ordered the crime. So Richard, tell us about your relationship to the princess. I am their uncle. They were the sons of my brother Edward. When your brother Edward died, his son Edward, your nephew, was only 12 years old. So you were named Lord Protector in order to reign England on his behalf. Don't tell me you didn't have a motive to murder him. What do you want to imply with that question? I have nothing to do with their disappearance. I don't know what happened to them. Come on, Richard. It was you who brought the princes to the tower in the first place and who kept them there together. And it was you who had their parents' marriage declared invalid, which made the young princess illegitimate. That's a lie. I've got nothing to do with that. The marriage was declared invalid by an assembly of our most noble lords and commoners, not by me. An assembly of lords who all wanted to please you. And right on the following day you began your reign as King of England. And only a couple of weeks later Edward, who should have become king, and his little brother were never seen in public again. Do you want to imply that I killed them with my own hands? That's an outraging accusation. I loved my nephews with all my heart. Well, perhaps Richard did not kill them with his own hands, but rather had them killed by another person. This, at least, is what James Tyrell said. James Tyrell was an English knight and a trusted servant of Richard III. He remained true to Richard's family, the House of York, even when the rival family of the Tudors claimed the throne. For this, he was tortured and eventually executed. Under torture, Tyrell admitted that Richard III had ordered him to murder the princess. During more questioning, however, he was unable to say where the bodies were. Moreover, the only recording we have of this answer were made by Sir Thomas More. 
Sir Thomas More is well known for banning people's statements in the direction which fitted his own purposes best. So there is more than a little bit of doubt left whether Tyrell was really the murderer. But let's not stick with him any longer as there is another important suspect. Let me now introduce you to Henry Stafford, 2nd Duke of Buckingham. He was Richard's right hand man and he had several potential motives. First of all, he was himself a descendant of the dead King Edward III and so Buckingham may have hoped to accede to the throne instead of Richard III. Alternatively, he too may have been acting on behalf of Richard. Some regard Buckingham as the likeliest suspect. His execution after he had rebelled against Richard in October 1483 might signify that he and the king had fallen out. So let's interrogate him in the dungeons. Let go! Let go! Don't you hear me? I'm no common criminal. I'm the Duke of Buckingham. Well, I'll call you Henry nevertheless. Here, in the dungeons, your title, wealth and connections won't help you anything. You are accused of having had a hand in killing Prince Edward and Prince Richard. How do you defend yourself? Those accusations are nonsense. I haven't done anything to the princess. Henry, you have got more than one motive to eliminate the princess. First of all, you hated the mother's family, the Woodvilles, with all your heart, since you were married to a Woodville girl against your will. Then, you had quite a strong claim to the throne yourself. Well, who doesn't want the throne? If that's your argument, there would be a lot of suspects. So why did you choose me? Richard III is far more likely to be the murderer of the princess than I am. I would never kill a child. I mean, how could they become dangerous to anybody, especially after they were named illegitimate? Come on, Henry. Everybody knows that you were one of the leading conspirators in a rebellion against Richard III. Even if the princes were only children, they could have served as figureheads for the House of York. Whereas you supported the House of Tudor. This is another very good reason to get rid of them once and for all. Words, words, words. Nothing but words. You're much worse than those idiots who beheaded me. At least they had some strong evidence against me, not just idle words. And this is where you're wrong, Henry Duke of Buckingham. Look here at this manuscript, which was only discovered in 1980, almost half a century after your death. It clearly says that the princes were murdered on... Wait a second. Um, what does it say? The princes were murdered on your device. Or on your advice. Well, the letters are so faded. They're really very hard to read. Just give me a minute. I can, can I get another candle? The light is horrible here. Will this mystery ever be solved? Nobody knows. And so it became one of the most famous secrets of the famous tower in London.